A very good evening to all of you. Um, should I start? Yes, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes. Yes. It's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Dr. Rajesh, consultant Vitrio Retina Services at Shankar Eye Foundation. Dr. Rajesh is an alumnus of Bangalore Medical College. He did his post graduation from RP Center, Delhi. He has a special interest in vitreo retinal diseases. He is a very active member academically with 46 peer reviewed articles till date. And he is also one of the co organizers of the prestigious RetNet Meet. We welcome you, sir, and we are obliged to have you here on this platform. Over to you, uh, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, madam, for the kind introduction. Uh, it's a honor and privilege to be a part of this uh, presentation. So without wasting much time, uh, I'll go into my topic, uh, which is complex diabetic uh, retinal detachments. So clear logical solutions. I'll give some amount of uh, tips and clues how I deal with uh, these cases on a daily basis. So uh, before I jump into the cases per se, let me go into the summary of indications. Diabetic vitrectomy is indicated in um, in cases such as uh, where we have a media opacity, if a patient has a severe non-clearing vitreous hemorrhage, which might be either vitreous, subiloid, or a premacular hemorrhage. If there is tractional components and detachments of the retina, which, in, which include a taut hyoid or an EMM, which um, makes the uh, macular edema non-resolving to the standard care of treatment, which includes anti vegf and laser, threatening or involving a macula, TRD involving the disc or PMB, these have been indicated in the recent times. And combined uh, mechanism of retinal detachments, uh, which causes a regma break along with a tractional component. If there is a go cell or a hemolytic glaucoma, which is non yielding for most of the standard medications, here also we indicate um, to go ahead with vitrectomy. And the last uh, and the least of the uh, indications would be an anti alert proliferation despite adequate retinal ablation with laser or cryo which might also in, uh, help, uh, the vitrectomy might help in these situations. So for our aid, as compared to the previous years, we have advanced technology, which help us to uh, safely tackle these cases, which include some to mention is high-speed uh, cutting machines with pressure vents, smaller gauge cutters, which can help us to go beneath these membranes, valve canvas, which prevents fluid fluctuations, bleeding and dispersion of this heme in the vitreous cavity an excellent wide angle viewing systems, uh, their non-contact as compared to what we had contact systems previously, which helps us to keep the visibility till the end of the surgery. Chandelier side system helps us to, you know, uh, free both our hands for the uh, dissection in complex cases and every fluids like uh, PFO, which helps to settle back the retina. But in addition to these, the most common instruments, which I uh, preferably use uh, in diabetic, uh, which, which I always keep uh, in handy, includes the uh, forceps, which might be end grasping or a mass graft no, forceps and a curved scissors. Vertical scissors was to be used previously, but it's of not much uh, in vogue in the recent years. Uh, not to uh, least to mention is uh, the chandelier light system, which helps us uh, to keep both our hands free for the complex dissection. So let me go dive into my cases uh, directly. The, the simplest of the uh, diabetic widths is when the patient has a non-responsive diabetic macular edema in this condition, you can see. So there is a thick hyaloid, uh, which is uh, adherent and uh, keeping the retina taut and preventing the um, edema to resolve. So I've basically used tricot to stain the posterior cortex and to te show, demonstrate uh, how we go about. As in usual PVD, we go onto the disc and pull the entire vitreous up. But in these cases, we cannot do that. You can see that I'm trying to nudge and cut the connection between the disc and the uh, fovea. Once that is achieved, go all around the fovea and then lift up the vitreous. This helps us to prevent the retina from getting, the inner layers of the retina from getting torn away and helping us to clear the vitreous at the same time. My second case would be if a patient has, uh, if, you, if we decide to do an ILM peeling along with the posterior cortex uh, uh, detachment, uh, if the patient has a large cyst, it would be better to do a fovea sparing. This is what has uh, been demonstrated in this video. So once we do a, a edge of the ILM and peel it, uh, peel a defect all around and then try to Peel the uh, uh, centripetally, peel the ILM 
towards the cyst. So this is basically essential to prevent the de-roofing of the cyst and creating a lamellar or a complete thickness macular hole. Yeah, so once uh, the ilum is peeled all around the fovea to leave the tangential traction, if it's uh, long enough like this, we can go and trim the uh, flap to prevent the, the placement of floaters. The simplest of the other conditions, uh, the indications of vitrectomy, which was in the previous year, was the commonest being the vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, it's quite rare nowadays. Uh, post the dab, uh, the vitrectomy, uh, the PRP, which was introduced in the DRS study. So here we have a simple case of uh, subiloid hemorrhage, which is just about in the premacular region. So it is uh, the tackling of such situation is very easy. We just because there's not much of proliferation. So we go and just induce the PVD from the disc and lift up the entire uh, posterior cortex. So once we get the edge of it, the entire uh, subiloid uh, bleed, which is there, come in, comes into the cutter. And then inducing the PVD and completion of the vitrectomy is just a completion of the uh, case. There's nothing much difficulty, but when inducing the PVD, you should make sure that the vascular nails have been taken care of appropriately. Otherwise, it might create inadvertent breaks during the vitrectomy process. So once this is completed, since this is an AVI, there's no uh, laser marks. Uh, we complete the surgery by doing endolaser photocoagulation as in the form of scatter photocoagulation itself. If there's a simple TRD, which is limited to the disc or into the papillomacular bundle. So in these cases, we can still uh, manage to induce a, a PVD as in the regular cases. There's nothing much of an addition of the posterior cortex into the uh, retina. The vascular nays are not uh, present in these cases. So we can induce, we can afford to induce the PVD as in regular cases and lift up the entire posterior cortex. So not so popular technique, which was introduced initially in diabetic widths, uh, but it lost in uh, its work. Uh, the reason I'll let you know once I've completed this. So you can see a thick uh, proliferation at the disc and emanating into the uh, peripheral retina. So I've just gone over there, uh, lifted up the posterior cortex, created a rent, and with a forceps directly go into that rent portion and lift up the entire posterior cortex in total. So this was uh, called as end block technique where the entire posterior sheet of the vitreous was, uh, is used to be peeled up and then uh, it's uh, cut, it's taken into the cutter in a one go, single go. The usual issue with this is since the vascular nails and other additions to the retina is not very visible, it might cause atherogenic complications. One which you can see over here is a small break, which has caused because of the pull on the posterior cortex. Uh, I was lucky enough to manage this because there was not, not that was the only addition which was there uh, with minimal bleed around the surface of the retina. The rest of the um, bleeders were easily coagulated and laser was done. So because we cannot predict out the outcome of the traction of the retina and it might cause inadvertent bleeding and breaks, this went into this. So uh, the present situation, we use two most important approaches, either the inside out or the outside in. So what I mean by inside out is, so we start the dissection in the posterior pole that is uh, at in and around the macula or the disc, and then we we, uh, go outside and then start peeling the entire uh, membrane in the in outside in so we start from the outside as uh, indicated by the black arrows and then we dissect inwards towards the disc so each has its own advantages and disadvantages the advantages from inside out is that uh, the membrane can be easily dissected the secondary second membranes which are to be uh, you know looked for in the outside in is not to be worried about. The plane of dissection is easily identified and it can be easily uh, taken up. But the problem is if you create a break or if there's a bleeding, then it becomes an issue to continue with the surgery. 
as far as outside in uh, the basic uh, disadvantages of the inside out can be prevented but the peripheral detachment which can occur in an outside in becomes very messy and if it becomes pullous or if the second membranes are uh, easy uh, difficult to identify then we might end up in the wrong plane and causing more breaks and doing more harm to the patient so once the approach we have decided either outside in or inside out there are two more important steps uh, as far as the membrane dissection is concerned one is segmentation a large membrane rather than in toto which we removed in end block we cut open into pieces so that is called as uh, segmentation once the piece is created then it is separated from the retina which is called as delamination so let me go uh, walk you through the uh, some of the videos demonstrating this so this is the basic setup where you have uh, the standard three ports along with the chandelier inserted the chandelier can be inserted either superiorly or inferiorly or you can have a dual chandelier for a uh, uniform illumination here uh, i'm trying to induce uh, the uh, the posterior co uh, vitreous cortex separation from the disc i'm going uh, basically inducing a inside out approach so once that is effectively uh, taken out the, from the disc then i start going into the periphery so with the separated posterior cortex i go into the periphery and try to gently lift up the the tabletop configuration of the fibrovascular proliferation once there is some amount of separation which can be made out of here i am trying to dissect out and cause a segmentation you can see there is two proliferation on the uh, superior temporal aspect where it is where i am just going between those um, fibrovascular proliferation and segment it into two parts once that is done then we sit and uh, delaminate each of the proliferation and complete the dissection process let me uh, uh, go from the uh, this is the second approach that is going from outside to inside this is a combined retinal detachment you can see the break in the inflow temporal uh, to the disc i am trying to induce from inside out it was not possible so then i am going from outside to in now i could induce the pvd uh, cutting trying to do a truncation of the cone which is not possible in these cases because of the uh, strong adherence of the fibrovascular proliferation so once i get a plane so superior temporally i have already got a plane to dissect it so trying the same technique of inducing the uh, separation of the vitreous uh, from the periphery sorry just a minute yeah so once that is done uh, from the periphery we have uh, dissected out the vitreous now Uh, clinging on to the the main fibrovascular proliferation, dissecting it out uh, first segmentation into the superior and inferior portion, and then delaminating it uh, along the arcades. At each uh, basic step, we need to make sure that we don't create any atherogenic breaks. and the bleeders as and when uh, they start bleeding if there is an arterial ooze better to control it either by uh, diathermy or by uh, pressure ventilation pressure vented uh, rather than leaving it alone because if sufficient amount of clot forms then that might itself cause another uh, you know horrendous task of uh, removing the clots which is much more difficult as compared to the primary membranes i peeled the ilm to make sure that i have not missed on any second membranes or any other flimsy membranes on the macula and once that is completed an air protection and endolaser and tamponade is done so uh, it's not that uh, we should always stick on to inside out or outside in when you have a flat proliferation like this where a single technique may not work so identifying the plane in the periphery it might be very difficult in a flat proliferation so we start from the uh, center try to dissect it out into the periphery so like what i'm doing right now see once i have got the edge so i have induced the pvd into the periphery aspect and then trying to truncate the cone all around the fibrovascular proliferation so once the entire uh, fibrovascular proliferation is segregated from the periphery then i start attacking the the uh, membrane per se so here uh, i have started in the center went to the periphery finished up the uh, the uh, truncation of the cone and then came back inside to uh, complete the dissection process so this is a combined approach and it's more essential when you are trying to 
approach a flat qualification where you don't get a specific plane for dissection. So despite doing the best of our efforts, uh, it's very disheartening that some patients do come back with uh, recurrence with uh, breaks. So in this patient, uh, you can see that a large break uh, has happened because of the contraction of the membranes, which has formed just at the edge of the um, end of the arcades. So carefully identifying the membranes, dissecting it out gently without much of traction, because if we pull it very hard, then the break might extend and cause uh, further breaks because of the ischemic retina and the, uh, the laser retina, which might give away very easily. So we need to gently peel that membrane along with the aid of uh, PFCL, which I've used here. So there are three different areas where the breaks have formed. The superior temporal was the largest one, the inferior temporal and the temporal aspect. So three different proliferation at three different sites. So once the uh, uh, dissection of this proliferation is complete, uh, we always have to go into the periphery to look at if there's any anterior proliferation or any other vitreous which is adherent or remnant vitreous which is there because that might cause a recurrence once uh, we think that we have taken care of the posterior pole. So once there is a recurrence, always we need to go to the periphery, remove all the vitreous which is remnant, then go ahead with the uh, air fluid exchange and endo laser and, and tamponade. So, sir, uh, Sumit, sir, do we have time or uh, should I stop here? Because it's already 18 minutes. This is your last case? That you could... Yes, sir. This is the last case. Okay. That is... No problem. Go ahead. So, uh, putting all this into conjunction, uh, let us see what we can achieve uh, in a patient, a type 1 diabetic. So, she was recently diagnosed when she complained of visual issues. She was not a known diabetic. Visual acuity in the right eye was 624, left eye was uh, 5 by 60. Diagnosis was uh, bilateral TID involving both the eyes, left worse than the right. This was the fundus to begin with, the left and the right, with a dense uh, neovascularization. So, I'll just run through this video because it's uh, pretty long. So, this is again the setup. I, as you can note, that there are two chandeliers and a thick proliferation adherent to the entire. Uh, retina. So start the dissection uh, inferiorly with a 24 gauge needle. Um, since I have uh, dissected, the, I have truncated the uh, vitreous, peripheral vitreous from the central prolif. So once that is done, the it is easy to lift up the entire uh, fibrous proliferation in a membranous uh, format and try to dissect it out. So cauterizing the bleeders and dissecting the membranes, then switching on to bimanual and carefully cutting out all the vascular nails to uh, separate the fibrovascular proliferation from the underlying retina. So in this process, we end up having a lot of uh, bleeding and a, a number of clots, which might uh, get strongly adherent to the retina. So we have to continue pursue the dissection process. We cannot just leave it uh, in the midway and try to cauterize as much as possible. Liberal use of cautery is very essential in this uh, cases. And as and when um, possible, the membrane has to be uh, shortened so that we have better visibility of the underlying retina. So cloth dissection is, I'm trying to see how much I can peel off the clots from the residual, the retina to try to flatten it out. I'm just running through it because uh, lack of time. So post-op two weeks, uh, we can see that uh, I have uh, tried to achieve um, what where I started up with, with a fairly attached retina and a good visual uh, background. After uh, silicon oil removal, uh, the vision is stable yeah, at six times. So lessons learned is every diabetic vitrectomy is different. I need to assess the condition and approach appropriately. Appropriate use of technological support, which includes uh, uh, smaller gauge cutters, uh, whichever is uh, the surgeon is comfortable with. Bimanual approach, it's a life savior in, uh, in, in a variety of uh, vitectomy cases, especially diabetic. So keep it ready and in handy whenever you want to just switch it. So always switch it. Don't have an hesitation for it. So I spoke about two techniques. Some say inside out is better. Some say outside in is better, but no technique is better than the other. It all depends upon the surgeon, whichever is, uh, which is convenient to him. So he should uh, engage that or use both of them. I had showed in one of the flat proliferation cases. 
the common factor to for all the uh, success in all these cases is the surgeon skill that should never be you know supplemented with any of the other machines or instruments i thank you for this uh, uh, time and uh, patience hearing for my presentation thank you sir oh thank you so much uh, rajesh it was uh, indeed a treat to the eyes and i'm sure a lot of people will you know call you up for their taking tips on doing a diabetic vitrectomy 